reporting. Thanks, Sarah. Mark Regev is the spokesman for the Prime Minister of Israel. Mark joins us now live from Jerusalem. Are we going to see Israeli ground troops in Gaza? Obviously, you understand that I can't go into operational details, only to say that we will do what we need to do to protect the people of Israel. I mean, one million Israeli civilians, that's one-seventh of our population, have been on the receiving end of these rockets from Hamas-controlled Gaza for months now. Uh, bombardment after bombardment, and they've attacked our cities, our villages. Uh, we will keep our options open. We will act until we can achieve peace and quiet for those Israeli citizens who deserve to live in peace and quiet. Ultimately, you've got a whole generation of young children who instead of today sitting in a classroom are sitting in bomb shelters and it's happened too often. This has to how, end. How do these, we'll, we'll how do these airstrikes, Mark, bring peace and quiet? Because we are targeting the Hamas military machine. We're targeting their command and control. We're, we're targeting their missile launching facilities. We're targeting their missile storage facilities. We are dealing a blow to Hamas, which I hope when we come out of this will bring a period of quiet. Ultimately, there's no solution but peace. We all understand that. We want peace with our Palestinian neighbors. We understand that. But Hamas is an enemy of peace. Hamas is dedicated to destroying the state of Israel. They say any Palestinian who negotiates peace with Israel is, of course, a traitor to their extremist agenda. And so uh, it, it's important to understand that we are defending ourselves today, but we still at the same time extend a hand to our Palestinian neighbors. We want peace. We want reconciliation. We're ready for negotiations. We're talking about targeted operations here. Among the casualties, you've got you know, things, you know, two children, a pregnant woman, uh, a baby, 15 children are wounded. These aren't targeted operations. I, I beg to disagree. And first of all, I urge you and all the media, you've got to be very, very careful with the information that Hamas puts out from Gaza. As you know, there's no independent free media in Gaza. It's difficult to find good information. Hamas has lied so you don't about a number of things over the last day and a half. So you don't believe there are any children casualties, any pregnant women casualties, No, no, I didn't casualties. say that. I, d I did not say that. I said you've got to be careful with the information coming out. I can say the following. The orders given to the military are crystal clear. You have to be as surgical as is humanly possible. But here I have to say what is known. Hamas is committing a double war crime. International humanitarian law is clear. They both target Israeli civilians, and that you know. Every Israeli civilian, man, woman, and child, is a legitimate target in the eyes of Hamas, and you can see that through their indiscriminate bombarding of our cities and communities. But at the same what? time, their second war crime, uh, specifically against international humanitarian law, is that they bury their military structure their military infrastructure inside civilian areas. We have released pictures now of them launching rockets right next to civilians. And we urge Gaza's civilians, we know Hamas is using you as a human shield. Please, if you can, vacate areas adjacent to Hamas military uh, installations. You are not Mark, our target. Uh, In many ways, Mark, we see the people of Gaza is it, as a victim it, of the Hamas regime. Isn't the Middle East already volatile enough with the situation now because of the Arab Spring, because of its aftermath? Aren't you making an already bad situation worse? The bottom line is we didn't want to be here. The bottom line is if the border had been quiet, if they weren't targeting our people, if they weren't shooting rockets into Israel at our cities, w this operation wouldn't have they had would to argue be. It would have been if, if Israel wasn't t We're doing targeted airstrikes. No, but uh, I think it's very important to look at cause and effect. This whole round of violence started with Hamas attacks on Israel. We are responding to attacks that they initiated. If the border was quiet, there's no reason that we'd have to do this. But in the last month alone, you had three escalations of violence, each one initiated by Hamas. I mean, it's got to be remembered who Hamas is. Not only according to the Israeli definition, but according to the European Union, according to the United States, Canada, Australia, Japan, and others, Hamas is classified as a terrorist organization, and rightly so. This is an organization that holds power in Gaza with an iron fist. They've destroyed all independent civil society in Gaza. They're trying to create a Taliban-type state. They have uh, sacrificed the needs, the real needs of the people of Gaza on the altar of their jihad against Israel. 
Do you think the people of Gaza want this struggle? Do you think the people of Gaza want to see these attacks? Like the citizens of southern Israel, the people of Gaza are also victims of this terrible Hamas regime. Mark Regev, the spokesman for the Prime Minister of Israel, speaking to us from Jerusalem. That's one side of the story. CNN will be speaking a little bit later to Osama Hamdan.